That was good. I'm just going to And then I will just advance the slide, right? Yep. Yeah.
We're going to be starting the program in just a few minutes. So if you can uh, make your way towards the conference room here, if you like, or gather around, you can get started. <laughs> Farm boys comes in handy once in a while. <laughs> They approached me. I assume they've told you that we actually yes, have yes. to stand. Yep, that's the only place I'm right here. I just don't want somebody to step on this thing. Okay. Yeah, we'll put it in quilt. I think it's not going to hurt. Okay. Who yeah. else is going to go to the top and then you know that's right over I'll just let them go. <laughs> It's like we are. Yep. Yep. Good morning, everyone. I know we've got people flowing in. If you're along the walls and you can scooch down a little bit, it'll just help us greet as many people inside the room. We've got one spot up here, a spot over here. We're going to go ahead and kick off. And I am Jennifer DiCavellis. I'm the CEO here at Hennepin Healthcare. And I have the honor just of saying welcome. Um, I am so excited by the number of you that showed up to honor our mission, to honor our teams, to honor our donors, our recipients. What an incredible day to celebrate the 60th anniversary of our transplant center. And just this morning, hearing stories, hearing lives impacted has been just incredibly impactful to keep the mission the people at the forefront of the work we do every day. I want to start off by just thanking our team members. We have a lot of team members here, past team members, present team members, generations of team members. They are what make this place tick. 
They have committed their lives. They have committed their careers. You'll hear today they've committed hearts and minds. They're not here because this is a job. They're here because this is family, that this matters, this is impactful. So I wanna thank all of them. I also wanna thank our... I also wanna thank and welcome our donors and our recipients. You've trusted us with your lives. You've trusted us as family and your commitment in coming back here today to help us celebrate makes a difference. We talk about being here for life. Today is a great example of us being here for life, here together. And we couldn't do it without each and every one of you. So I wanna say thank you. And with that, I'm gonna pass off to Eugenia Steffens, who runs our transplant center. Before I pass off to you, I want to say in this virtual world when we're not together, I love that she is on camera on Zoom meetings and behind her is the tree of life. And I know we've got a picture of it as you checked in. So every meeting, every day, Eugenia is reminding us why we're here. That tree of life is behind her. It is our inspiration and it represents all of you. So thank you. Yeah. Thank you. So it, as you will hear throughout the day today or the morning of the program, this is this is a team and it's a family and um, it's all all of the everybody in this room that makes this work and and keeps making it work. So um, you, I mean, not supposed to start out with tears yet. So thanks, Jennifer. <laughs> all right. Now I'm going to go back to my scripts. I don't move on too much. So thank you, Jennifer. And on behalf of um, Dr. Silkinson, the medical director for the transplant program, and Dr. Paul Staler, who's our surgical director, who unfortunately is not feeling well. So in true form with transplant, not going to infect everybody, um, but is here in heart and spirit also. Um, thank you for joining us. Um, we welcome you and we thank you for joining us in person. And we do have some people on Zoom too. As we take the time, the time today to recognize and celebrate the 60 year history of the transplant program. Hennepin Healthcare System and HCMC um, has a long history of being innovators and advocates for patients with kidney disease dating back to 1957 when we were known at that point as Minneapolis General Hospital. Um, and Claude Hitchcock led the charge of research towards the goal of kidney transplant. Today, we're, we're here to celebrate that history and the first kidney transplant that took place here on uh, February 13th, 1963, make marking the first kidney transplant in the upper Midwest. So yes, we were before the University of Minnesota. <laughs> It marked the ongoing pursuit of successful treatment for kidney failure. This includes actively seeking out and acquiring the skills needed to bring the first kidney dialysis to the region at, at Minneapolis General Hospital. As the number of transplants continued to grow, reaching the double digits in, the, in 1965, the transplant clinic was established to provide that much needed ongoing follow-up um, that contributes to the success of transplant. The partnership of patients and family uh, of transplant, the multidisciplinary team, which today comprises of nephrologists and transplant surgeons, transplant nurse coordinators, social workers, dietitians, financial coordinator, transplant pharmacists, cardiology, infection, infectious disease, psychology partners, in addition to our amazing uh, patient service coordinators and medical assistants. It truly is a multidisciplinary group. And our multidisciplinary team adds so much uh, to our program. I have just a few examples of how the team makes a difference every day. Our program is one of the few transplant programs in the nation that acknowledges and honors every deceased donor, uh, gift of life by ensuring that the family
donor families sent a letter of recognition of their, for their loved one's gift of life. Sarah Shu, our social worker, recognized early on how important acknowledgement is to the donor family. And it made it a standard practice. And transplant programs from across the country reach out to ask how we do it, how do they make that a part of their standard practice? Early on in incorporating pharmacists within the, pro the program as our pillars of our program to ensure a successful transplant. Tracy Anderson Haug and her team are instrumental in sharing the transplant clinical pharmacy knowledge with resident pharmacists who go on to practice in the transplant pro programs across the country. And her, um, her teacher and who she was a um, student under, Karen Heim Bethoy, is with us today too, who is actually our very first transplant pharmacist. <laughs> Incorporating healthy lifestyles and nutrition is, a, is an important component in our transplant program. And the transplant program dietitians, Don and Wendy, are involved in every kidney transplant and the phases of their transplant or their donation to ensure that lifestyle factors support their goals for optimal health and kidney function. And the glue that holds it all together, as I've heard many times, is how many times have we, I, we heard from physicians and from patients, everybody needs a transplant coordinator. They take such good care of us. In addition to what our team does within our walls, many of our team members serve or have served on local and national committees and boards, making sure that the voice of our patients and their needs are considered and advocated for. And since uh, 2010, Hennepin Healthcare System has proudly been the home to SRTR, which provides statistical analysis and regarding organ transplantation in the US under a contract from HRSA. So, but as we look back to the early days, um, the HEMCT not only provided the transplant services in the days before UNOS and OPOs like LifeSource came into a dis an existence, um, the staff of vascular access, or the helipad as it was known in, at that time, served the role of organ preservation team. They utilized a matching system out of the UCLA uh, to find candidates, um, contact those transplant programs to place the organs. Then, um, then they would travel with perfusion meat machines to donor hospitals, and then to transplant hospitals across the country, delivering the kidneys dedicated to honoring the donor families, wishes to donate. They, that has even in the past led them where they traveled to Rome with a kidney. And one time sending a kidney to, Tyran, to Iran when there was no recipient in, to be found in the US. Wow. So HESC, we have had leaders in transplant in many ways besides, uh, besides our first transplant and as the other things that I've mentioned here, in 1998, Dr. Mark Odlin, back there, all you guys that want to see him. Someone let him get away. Yeah. And Dr. Arthur Dye, uh, rarely did you see one of them without the other around him, performed the first laparoscopic procedure for living donors in Minnesota, shortening the recovery time and really opening the door um, to allow transplant or donation to uh, more people because it didn't require as long as a recovery time. In uh, 2003, the U transplant program was identified as a top performer by the United Health Systems Consortium. In 2007, we set up a regional pair kidney exchange program in the absence of having a national program. So that would help fulfill the need for transplant programs in Minnesota and uh, Wisconsin, North, South Dakota, Upper Iowa, uh, helping to orchestrate uh, paired exchanges that oftentimes didn't even include patients from Hennepin, but serving the transplant community as a whole. In 2008, we had our first non-directed kidney donation at Hennepin, again, further expanding the donor pool and providing this opportunity for a new group of, of altruistic donors. 
And then as recent as 2019, implemented a hepatitis C donor program um, and had the first recipient to re in the upper Midwest to receive such a kidney. In uh, September of 2019, we also celebrated doing our 3,000th transplant here at Hennepin. And, and to, to date, counting the transplant that we just did yesterday, 3,186 uh, people have received the gift of life at Hennepin here, and 1,159 living donors have given the gift of life. Um, So as you can see from those early lives, so many lives impacted. Um, I'd like to take this opportunity to recognize physician uh, program leads over the years and the many the passing of torches that have gone on. So for surgery directors, initially we had Claude Hitchcock and John Hoglin, uh, and then jo Robert C. Anderson came to, took over as a surgical director, and then Mark Hill. And, oh God! <laughs> I think Mark Hill is supposed to be here, but he might be in surgery. How about Mark? Mark Adlin, then Mark. Yeah, Mark Hill, wherever he is, <laughs> and now Paul Staler. And then for for uh, medical directors, uh, we started out with Fred Shapiro, who really kind of started the renal program here. Then Rao, which I know some of the patients here in here remember, Dr. Rao, uh, Dr. Silkinson, Bert Kasiski. Jeff Conair, and then back to Dr. Silkinson. <laughs> and we've really been blessed to have some great nursing leaders too. Um, first, the clinic manager was Nettie, Nettie Watson, and then Beth Mensing, and Carol Jurdy, Rhonda Meyer, Chris Hart, and Barb Danielson. She's over there. <laughs> and our HCMC um, organ preservation team was led by Mary Jane Lacombe. And we we're fortunate to have many, several of these people or their family members here. Um, they've all just demonstrated and really have led to that commitment and of both patient and program excellence. Transplant doesn't happen in isolation and not without our dedicated and caring team and colleagues. Uh, I'd like to recognize our colleagues and departments across the organization that continue to aid us to making the gift of life um, as a reality. So we have card cardiology. I know there's somebody here. Um, yes. <laughs> Infectious disease. Um, the laboratory, renal pathology, and I see at least Dr. Frossum here, and <laughs> Gretchen Carey is here somewhere, and I'm not sure who else is here. Um, radiology, surgery, the surgery department for sure, STNU, which is the unit we recover patients on, ICUs, the nursing office, revenue cycle, pharmacy, and on and on and on. Um, there's so many areas throughout the organization that make this possible. Um, so I would like all current and former Hennepin employees, would you please raise your hand as we show our appreciation? And we work in collaboration with our community partners who share in the mission and help us to bring the gift of uh, the life-saving gift of life. Uh, life source. I know there's some life source people here. <laughs> University of Minnesota Immunology, the National Kidney Foundation, and SRTR, just to name a few. There'll be a big pause while I find the next page. Okay. Um, at this time, I'd like to invite Jenny Bodner, Living Donor Coordinator, the po to the podium. As Eugenia mentioned, today Hennepin has done 3,186 kidney transplants, and of that amount, 1,159 have been from living donors. 
Today, we'd like to recognize our longest surviving transplant recipient, Dwayne Burney and Karen Brown. Dwayne received his transplant on June 7, 1978, from a deceased donor, and Karen Brown, who received a living donor transplant on June 22, 1978. That was over 42 years ago, almost 43 years ago. This is quite an accomplishment when you consider the average survival of a recipient with a deceased kidney donor is approximately 11 to 12 years and 19 years for a living donor. And even in our present era, we'd like to ask those who are with us today who have received a kidney transplant to please raise your hand so we can see you all there. Many years ago in our transplant clinic, which at the time was located in the Shapiro building, we constructed our first tree of life and it had the leaves were various colors denoting the date the transplant took place. And then when we moved over to the Parkside building, the tree of life was recreated and the living donors were added to the team. They were listed as acorns. <laughs> <laughs> Then with the move to our current location in the blue and green building, we once again recreated our tree of life. Our tree continues to provide a visual representation of the many lives transplant um, touches at Hennepin Healthcare. And the recipients that have a dark green leaf for every um, transplant recipient, as you'll notice, and the light green leaves represent our living donors. Each leaf is labeled with the person's first name and the date of their surgery. We'd like to um, have a special thank you to Sterling Jeswell, who un undertook the gigantic task of actually cataloging where your leaves are located. And we now have a, li uh, a library that, and if you want to stop in and see um, Sterling, you can find your leaf where it's located on the news, news tree. Living donors are family members who's, who are spouses, friends, neighbors, fellow church members, community members, and sometimes they're people who don't even know the transplant recipient. We'd like to ask those of, who are present with us who have donated a kidney to please raise your hand so we recognize you for the wonderful gift of life that you have given. In, 1913, in 2013, Hennepin, in collaboration with Life Source and the Gift of Life, created this wall of heroes mosaic and kiosk. This is located in the second floor skywalk of the Red Building, adjacent to our Spirit Officer Center. It provides us an oppor opportunity to recognize not only the living donors at Hennepin Healthcare, but it also um, honors those in their death who have passed on the gift of life through the gift of organ, eye, or tissue donation. We'd like to take this moment to, of silence to recognize and appreciate the gift that was given in this time of sorrow. And now I'd like to invite Hennepin Transplant Program Director, um, John Silkinson up to the, um, the podium. Thank you, Jenny. Um, first of all, I wanted to uh, acknowledge the fact that uh, Paul Staler, Dr. Paul Staler, who's the surgical director and the co-program director is not here, but I was even as of last night, I was vetting things with him and seeing what he had. He's very disappointed he can't be here, but he's with us in spirit and perhaps even watching on the Zoom call. Um, what I wanted to talk about first of all is something that reiterates what Jenny says. 
the importance of our Eugenia said the importance of the multidisciplinary team for transplantation. Transplant from the infancy, from the start, even, and we were amongst the first back in the 60s, was a program that developed on the basis of uh, nephrologists, surgeons. Claude Hitchcock was a surgeon who did this, but he was the one who sent uh, representatives from the departments to Seattle to learn about dialysis. We had vascular access. Everything's integrated together. And that is uh, something that um, is so important in the development of kidney disease treatments, including transplant, but also the continued care for the patients that have kidney disease and dialysis transplantation. It's very much multidisciplinary uh, kind of team approach, and we never forget that. So on that, I actually want to have people who are from the program, who've worked with the program through the years to come up to the front. Everybody that's worked with the program, even outside, if you can come up to the front, we're gonna have, um, you're not gonna be here the whole time and I'm not gonna make anybody dance, <laughs> except for Bart Marushka. So we're going to, um, we're gonna have everybody come up here and then we're going to kind of uh, recognize Hey, some people can come over here by me. <laughs> so there's still some stragglers down to the end. But um standing <laughs> so who we're who we're seeing here, there's uh transplant. Coordinators, and like Eugenia says, the coordinators are the glue that holds everything together. They're really, I know this for when I call other transplant programs around the nation to ask about a patient, I don't ask to speak to the doctor usually. I say, no, no, connect me to the coordinator. They know everything and can tell you everything. And they're the ones that can tell you who's talked to, you need to talk to somebody uh, else. But anyway, so. Now that we have everybody here, I want to then now we're going to go backwards and I want to have everybody stay up here that's been within the program in the program for five or more years. And everybody else, we appreciate we're, we're going to have you go back to your place. It's going to be ultimately the last one standing. Okay. <laughs> You'll be up here later, <laughs> and you'll be here in years to come. So um, next, I want to have everybody stay up here who's been with the program for 10 years. Ten years or more. Okay, now 15 years or more. <laughs> And I, I want to call out Jeff Wang, Dr. Jeff Wang, who's just walking that way. He is, um, he actually was instrumental with Paul Staler and Jesse Powell in gastroenterology and uh, starting the, then arranging for the first hep C donor positive to donor to recipient negative transplant. Thank you. I also brought Dr. Simmon. Dr. Simmon in cardiology worked closely with Dr. Herzog, who many of you know. Dr. Herzog's been part of the USRDS and is a leading expert in cardiology as it affects kidney uh, failure and transplant patients. But uh, Mengistu was with us for several years, and now we have Dr. Luke Cole as our cardiology director. So now I've actually forgotten where I am. <laughs> 20 years. Okay, now people that have been here for 20 years will have the rest of the year. And it's, it sounds really bad to say that, doesn't it? <laughs> so now we're at 20 years. And now let's look at um, talking anybody 25 years or more staying up here. Okay, now we're um, now we're with the the long timers. So anybody who's been here for thirty years or more, stay. And... Wow. 
You did six. Okay, now thirty-five years. Oh. Um, forty years or more. You're not okay. Ellen Bernardson. We have to mention Ellen Bernardson. Ellen Bernardson was one of the original contract coordinators in the very early years, but in amongst the early ones, and um, and has been, um, I mean, just incredible. I've never seen somebody can do as good of an H and P. That's <laughs> Ellen. She's supreme. Okay, so now we have Bart Danielson. Who was the administrative <laughs> director for how many years then? Or, or, like you've been 43. 43 years in the program. Administrative director for a long time. You started, you've done dialysis. You, you did everything. You worked on the helipad. Mark Adlin's hair. <laughs> and, and, <laughs> yeah, she, she knows all the dirt on everybody. Yeah, see, I'm not, I'm not sure if I was. I think Barb was here before I was. I hung out with the account when I was when I was a resident and that. So and then and then uh, you know I so I started in '78. You know I wasn't here for the original franchise. So I, 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 I didn't I didn't do that. Uh, but I think Barb, I think you were working in the OPAD uh, when when I started as a resident, and, which was unique. And I tell you, I want to give a special uh, thanks to the Lacombe family because of it. Oh, Barb is a member of that because they were so dedicated to this transplant program in the early in the years. And it was a lot of work early on because it wasn't, just wasn't as efficient as it was today. So I also want to say, uh, Eugenia talked about, you know, the slideshow and that. Those are all bursts of this program. And Eugenia started this, you know, the, the exchange program and, you know, and it always irked me to go to meetings and hear you and the Mayo claim that they did all this stuff that was new because because there were so many of those things, everything in those slides that we did that was, that was you know, so. Um, I remember one time, oh, you know, I, you know, I think well, one other special thing I said when the University Healthcare Consortium named us as one of the top three transplant programs in the country, and that was 2003. You know, we're no worse now than we were then when we got named that. We're, and, you know, the program is better now than we did. But I think that was really a big thing, and it really spoke to the dedication of all the people here and the multidisciplinary uh, aspect of this. I remember one time we were having a review and we were sitting, we were sitting with this transplant surgeon, well, the, all the transplant surgeons were sitting with the surgeon from uh, Kansas City. And he, you know, just kind of, yeah, says, you guys, said, do you guys have hospital wives? And I said, yeah, I got four. <laughs> and I said, I got Barb Danielson. <laughs> I got Ellen Bernard's. <laughs> I had Dee Dee Hildreth. <laughs> and I have Tammy Hoff, who was my administrative assistant. I said, whenever they tell me to do something, I do it. <laughs> because they were always right and, and, uh, and never led me astray. So, uh, but it is a dedicated team for all this. And, you know, I remember. Uh, Gosh, this is in the 90s, and Hitchcock called our nine and me to the office and he sat us down. I think Andy was there. And he, he said, Okay, Art, you're going to be the trauma director. Mark, <laughs> you're going to be the transplant director. Okay, all right, get out of here. <laughs> and that was it. But my job was easy because I had this whole clinic system and team all set up for me. You know, when Art got it, there was no level one trauma center in the country. And we were in one of the first three and he had to put that all together. I just had to do what everybody else told me to do. And we did fine. <laughs> but I'll tell you the thing, I think the thing that really makes this program absolutely outstanding is that whenever there was an issue, whenever there was a problem, all we had to do was say, what's best for the patient? Oh, That's what we're gonna do. Hold and, the mic up. It's a great thing. But sorry, Josh. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. But so you're the last one. But guess what? You, you're too modest because I think that it's important to say, even though he did not do the first one, I kind of considered at least in the time that I've been here, uh, or since 2000 or so, um, 
and probably before, I consider Mark Odland and Art Nias the heart and soul of the program. And so I think that that is, and I actually asked uh, Dr. Staler, I said, do you think that sounds goofy? He goes, no, we all agree. And I think that everybody in our program probably feels the same. They understood and appreciated the multidisciplinary aspect to the program and they uh, they supported it and lived by it. So thank you. So um, I want to just thank everybody that was is has been part of the program. And um, now um, we, um, as maybe some of you know, we had a, a coordinator for many years, Mary Lee Hansen, who passed away in 2020. She was beloved by patients like I've never, never seen with any, any person ever. And um, I think um, it was a huge loss to our program and it was also a huge loss to the patients she cared for, for her fellow friends and team members within the program, as well as for the whole hospital. She started out in other areas before she was in transplant. She was in transplant maybe 20, 23 years, but she was in other parts of the hospital, including orthopedics. And the reason that's important is um, when I'd be in clinic and somebody needed an X-ray for something, I'd be like, I don't know what to do. Mary Lee, tell me which ones to order, which X-rays do we order? She'd always be able to do that. She was a guru in urology as well. But I think most importantly, she was the most compassionate human being. And we had uh, trans. We have had for some time, Sarah. How many years the transplant fund? Maybe like fifteen years. We have a transplant fund. This is a patient assistance fund, which is through Hennepin Health Foundation. It's a um, a fund that we use to provide patient assistance for things like even lapses in insurance, lost medications, uh, many many things. Um, and uh, what that was called was always the transplant um, program, uh, the transplant fund. And we thought, well, that that's just doesn't, that's a kind of a boring thing to say, was donate to the transplant fund. So after Mary Lee passed, we uh, renamed it the Mary Lee Hansen Transplant Fund. So we're not going to continue. Now, I'd like to invite Jenny back up. Um, as as you've heard, you've heard a lot of discussion about the 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 way that our patients have been encouraged to write donor families, deceased donor families. This is a really just an incredible effort that Sarah uh, kind of started and really has pushed, and has been a model for other programs that want to do the same. But also, of course, living donors give kidneys to patients to recipients, and most people know their living donors. Uh, and so they have plenty of options and time to thank them. Um, maybe they'll send them a letter, of course, if they live elsewhere. But we also have the altruistic donors. These are people who donate a kidney of their own free will and because they have a desire to help somebody who has end-stage kidney disease and be able to have a transplant. Um, with that, we thought, well, they can get letters too. So we, we have them write letters to their donor who they may or may not ever see. Some people want to remain anonymous and never, um, never be acknowledged. But we have some letters from a couple that we just wanted to share today. And I have a letter from a recipient to his donor. I'm going to read that. And then Jenny's going to read the response from the recipient. So the letter is from Henry. Hello. My name is Henry, and I'm in my early 60s. I am married, and I live in Minnesota. I have four stepchildren, 12 grandchildren, and six great-grandchildren. My health was declining over the last 13 years. I've been on the transplant list for six years. I was on dialysis for two years and had four surgeries for dialysis. I felt terrible. I was tired all the time and nauseous. On dialysis days, I had about an hour total of good energy. I just would go to dialysis, go home, and rest. But now, my energy is through the roof. You have changed my life completely. 
like night and day. It is amazing, and I am grateful to you. My wife and I love to travel. For the past two and a half years, we have felt handcuffed to our home due to my health and to the pandemic. We were able to take a short overnight vacation to Lake Independence recently. This was perfect because now I am independent and I feel free. The tiny vacation felt like a week. It was wonderful. We look forward to traveling more when we are cleared by the medical team. I thank you from the bottom of my heart for the life-giving gift you have given me. I pray for you and your family every day. It was a miraculous endeavor that you donated. You were raised with high integrity values. If you would be open to meeting in the future, we would like that. If you would like to remain anonymous, we would respect that as well. The transplant program said we would need to wait six months before meeting. My wife suffered along with me every step of the way on my health journey. She is tearful talking about how you have changed our life. We both work hard to take care of our health and we will continue to do this to protect this very precious gift. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Sincerely, Henry. Hello, Henry. I was delighted and surprised to get your letter. I knew that the donor and the recipient couldn't meet for at least six months. So, as you said, so I guess I wasn't expecting to hear and or receive anything before that time. My name is Kelly, and I'm in my early 30s, and I also live in Minnesota. I am married, and I have two sons. I will be very happy to meet you and your family after the six month point. If that is what you still want at the time, it's totally up to you. I'm so, so very happy and relieved to hear that you are doing well. I can only begin to imagine the burden of being on dialysis, both for the kidney patient and the kidney patient's family. I know that you will have to be on anti-rejection drugs for the rest of your life, and it's not like it's all going to be smooth sailing all the time either. But it is wonderful that the burden has been lightened a bit for you. It is especially exciting that you can feel comfortable getting farther and farther from home. I hope you and your wife are able to do a lot more traveling. And please know that the benefits of the surgery that you received far outweigh any inconvenience for me. And truly, the surgery really was a very minor inconvenience. The team took amazing care of me. The doctors, the nurses, and the coordinators also prepared me very well. I knew exactly what to expect. I was only in the hospital for two nights, and I returned to a regular diet right away. And I was walking around the night of the surgery. I'm back to running and biking and doing everything I did before. The removal was easy and uncomplicated, and they were able to do it laparoscopically. In other words, it went about as well as possibly could be expected. I wish you all the best with your continued recovery and you and your wife's adjustment to your new normal. Thank you so much for your letter. Sincerely. Kelly. And John, it's been six months. Yeah, and I think that it's time for them to meet. So we now have the first meeting between Henry, the recipient, and Kelly, the donor. So would both families like to come forward? Thank you. 
Thank you, everybody, um, for coming and sharing this 60th anniversary day with us. I think there's still food out there and and refreshments. So thank you very much. I'm going to be here. 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 I'm going